Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real. I'm your host, Bob Callagher. We have our co-host here today, Job Torini, and our returning guest host, Jay McHugh. Welcome back, Jay. Thank you, Bob, for having me. So we're going to talk a little bit about business in this segment, and I'm going to let Job get us started off here. I want to start with what we see a lot at in terms of presentations from agencies and in training new agents and an even experienced agents, and that's the value of building your team. Obviously, any purchase or sale of a property is a complex, complex transaction, and maybe you can break down the value of having a solid team put together for us, Jay. It's an excellent question. In this day and age, it's become more and more difficult to work with preferred vendors and partners that what I call get it. If they don't get it, then I choose not to work with them. As an example, uh, a, a good networking group that we all know of, uh, BNI, we're expected to pass referrals. The problem is if the people are average, why would you want to pass a referral to an average vendor? Therefore, the way I vet my preferred partners, like Ross Mortgage, is that they must use our send out card system and use it in a very gratuitous way. For example, oftentimes our real estate space or even the mortgage space are very generous at the time of the closing, at the time of the passing of papers. The problem with that, in my opinion, after 30 years, is that the buyer or seller sees the gargantuan money that you may have just made, and they don't understand your commission split. They don't understand your IRS tax lien. They don't understand all the time, energy, and effort. They're focusing on that ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Yet, if you had appreciated them more from the beginning, the initial meeting, the initial offer, the home inspection, the signing of the purchase and sale, and you were sending cards and gifts of thanks, well, you could go to the closing in a bikini or skip the closing because it's really nothing for you to be there. And you're still going to earn their referrals because they know that you were genuine, you were sincere, and you were very good getting them a house or that mortgage necessary. Now, oftentimes, These vendor partners, they don't see that. They're just transactional. And if they're transactional, they're not relationship. If they're not relationship, and hence the word relationship is relations, then I choose not to work with them. Because my referrals and my business and my reputation is too important for someone to say, I have the best rate, I have the best service, I have the best commitment time. I don't really care about that. Because all that stuff will be forgotten after the closing. But if someone says, Jay, I understand what you're looking for, and I'm going to prove it to you. And as an example, Alex writes into a card from a referral source. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that Jay McHugh has put his trust in helping me service your loan. We look forward to getting you to the finish line. Well, I didn't write that card, but I got benefits from it. And I'm teaching Alex and, Alex and others to do the same because guess what? That person who receives that card is going to say, wow, very genuine to thank the person who referred me, Alex. It helps Alex. It helps me. And it's a better process. Oftentimes, these business owners that I talk to, whether it's a BNI or a networking, they're shaking their heads in agreement, but yet they don't put it into action. And I tell them, I said, imagination without implementation, folks, is truly hallucination. And if someone does not get it, it's awesome because it goes back to my yes and no's. It's not the maybes. And if it's a no, believe me, you're not getting my business. If it's a yes, we're going to 10X this. We're going to blow this business up. And it's a wonderful way of working. Yeah, and it's a great way to vet partners, too, because if they have a genuine care about that relationship, you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that they're going to care that much about any customer that you interact with. And that's that's where the rubber meets the road, is it the customer experience and how they feel about when they close. Like you said, it's appreciation and, and expertise. One of the things that I've learned in my 30 years of business is that when people nod their head saying, oh, of course I refer you, Jay, inside they're saying, no way. You know why? I didn't do anything extraordinary. People struggle saying, why am I not getting many referrals, Jay? I said, we're not doing anything extraordinary. No one's going to uh, send an average person as a referral. I use this example. Bob and his wife have an anniversary coming up, and I say, hey, Bob, I have an average restaurant and an average location in Westford, and it's an average check. Let me uh, set up a reservation for you, and you can have an average experience. I say, Bob, I don't have any great restaurants in Westford. But on the opposite side, I say, Bob, congratulations, the anniversary is coming up. I got a great place in the little, it's a new place called the Great Road Kitchen. I know the owner over there. I'm going to set you up, and the tab is on me because I'm willing to put my neck out on that experience. Exactly. And a lot of people don't know the difference between a referral, an introduction, and a lead. 
And to gain a referral or a screaming, raving fan introduction is a big difference in the business world. It's an immense difference. And the people who get it are the ones that are getting these drop-in referrals. For example, I got a referral from a vendor partner that we put an offering in a house. I didn't see it. I'm listing his house this afternoon. Haven't seen it. And the people are just extremely happy because the person who referred me did an outstanding job of prepping. And when I finally got a chance to talk to them, they felt extremely comfortable. Those are the types of transactions I love working on. And I get more and more year after year because of my referral relationships continue to build and build. And you work hard on those too. I mean, I know from personal experience, when you're referring someone to a business partner, they're coming in, not just, not, I think anyone can ex- refer someone with the expectation of, you know, maybe a pie in the sky level of service, but they come in pretty educated on what they're going to get. And, and it's obvious that you care about making sure that the partners that help you and help your customers are getting help as well. 100% agree. And the, the important part is that if they're not willing to be referred, don't even mention someone. If they are extraordinary, then go all in and it will be a wonderful experience for both sides. Also, you know, as a customer of your business, send out cards. Like, I think part of what makes it a very different product is, is your expertise, your track record of success with it, and you're willing to share in the way that applies to kind of all businesses. All boats rise in a rising tide if we can help our businesses. For instance, you have competitors. Imagine if the competitors that you're friendly with all practice more relationships. I have competitors in the real estate real estate space wouldn't it be great if my competitors practiced more of this relationship space we wouldn't be competing against google and zillow and bankrate.com and quicken loans but people don't get that they become so selfish thinking oh if i share this then i won't have an advantage over jay 7.2 billion people on this earth maybe 6 million people in massachusetts maybe 300,000 buyers and sellers in a given year believe me there's a lot of business out there you can share this and when you do share it it benefits everybody in our industry that's an amazing point and it's those numbers are 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 very you know they're very interesting when you look at them like that absolutely and you you when you see it, it's interesting when you see or listen to sports radio and you see how competitive it is and you see the vitriol that's running around in broadcasting just whether you're a trump fan or not a trump fan and you just say wow if these people stopped and just built better relationships then they would be better off but instead bad news travels faster than the good news the world needs more good news the world needs to hear from bob from Job, from Alex, from Jay, from Stacy, more and more often. We do that. And because we're doing that, we have a consistency chain of more business coming and flowing towards us. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Now, you've been working with Send Out Cards for a long time, right? T- uh, Ten-year anniversary last week. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Because there's a lot of different uh, groups, demographic groups that listen to the show. And could you talk about how other... Uh, types of companies might be able to benefit from the the system as well? Excellent question. For instance, the card company began um, by helping people put a card together and sending it out. It would be time-consuming. Today, with great Wi-Fi, Comcast, Xfinity, iPhones, you can create a card on your phone with a mobile app and send it. In three to four business days, that person will receive it. It's a greeting card. It's a physical greeting card. You can use the picture that you stored on your phone or you took just a picture right there. Celebration at the closing table. Celebration at the walkthrough. You can use your own hand font signature if one wanted to and said, oh, I like to do my own handwritten cards. Well, like I say to people, it's nice to have a handwritten card, but there's no image. There's no visual. Therefore, it gets thrown out. These have shelf life. And because they have shelf life, you're more often going to be referenced or referred. In addition, they have close to 3,000 gifts that you can uh, attach to the card. One of the great gifts he, the founder of the company, Cody Bateman, is offering is his best-selling book, The Power of Human Connection. The Power of Human Connection, I tell people, if you could give this book out, gift it out during this Christmas holiday, that person reads that book, <coughs> is now indebted for you changing his or her life in a positive way. Do you think you're going to get more referrals? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's probably where many of the businesses that are associated ancillary to us or non-ancillary to us can benefit from this Mm -hmm. by recognizing if you're not sending out a card consistently to your clients and your customers and your screaming, raving fans, your competition thanks you. Mm -hmm. 
because you're not taking advantage of this amazing tool that one can separate themselves from their competition. Now, I have a lot of cliches that I've learned from my own self-developing courses that I've taken. One of my powerful words is that what is popular is not always right, and what is right is not always popular. People are afraid to put their toe in the water because they like to text, they like to email. Let me ask this question. If you're sending out an e-card today, can I put that on the Hanukkah mantle? Can I put that e-card on the Christmas tree? Absolutely not. Oh, you could print it out, Jay. <clears throat> Point is, folks, let's be serious. Let's be business people. When you send an e-card, it's a joke in today's world because people might think it's spam, whether it's a PC or a Mac Pro. They're not going to open it. Mm -hmm. It's an attachment. It's a virus. When you send a physical greeting card during the Christmas holiday Hanukkah season, it is great. But send it out the next 11 months and see your business soar. And when you become consistent, 10 cards a day, 86,400 seconds a day, folks, you can isolate 1,000 seconds to send out 10 great cards to your past customers, your current customers, your screaming, raving fans. How about the mailman? How about the hairstylist? How about the garbage man? I come up with these brainstorm ideas when people say, wow, that's amazing. Well, I've been doing it for 10 years, but I recognize there was a gentleman who picked up my trash this morning. There's someone who's dropping off a Federal Express gift for Stacy's Christmas present. There's a UPS driver. That's three cards right there, folks. Yeah. These two people I'm looking at, Job and Bob, cards will go out to them by my iPhone in the next hour after I leave this session. Now, I am at a different level than most, and that's fine. But the reality is, to get to my level, you first must start. And when you do start, you'll start to see all the magic flowing and funneling towards you and your business. Whether you're from Yale or jail, people need to send more cards, and they need to be receiving more cards because it's just a very difficult world out there today. No, exactly, in terms of market. Now, if somebody's interested in signing up for the system, how should they go about contacting you? Thank you, Bob. I created a URL to make it easy. We've all heard of this, My Random Acts of Kindness. I created a URL, MyRandomActsOfCardness.com. Mm -hmm. If you go there, you'll see a Join button. You can watch and look at the videos. You can pick the subscriptions. It is amazing that uh, if you notice what's happening with President Bush and the passing of President Bush, super nice guy. He loved writing cards. He loved having crazy socks. He loved just being genuine and being a human being. And you look at that and you say to yourself, wow, if I can demonstrate those kind of skills in our business and personal and relationship world, that would be great. If someone has a challenge with the URL, they can always call me at 617-699-7442 because I love to help. I love helping people not just get started but to have great success stories. And when you have those great success stories, it just fires up that be belly, and that's why you're up at 3.30, 4.30 every morning sending out 10 cards before most people wake up. That's right. Great. Well, we really appreciate you coming out and joining us again today, Jay. We've only got a couple of minutes before we wrap up. Uh, going back to Cody Bateman, the founder of uh, Send Out Cards, uh, what, was the, what was his first book called? You gave it to me. I, I, awesome book, Promptings. Promptings. That was actually what sold me on using the system. If you wouldn't mind, because I'm sure you can do it more just, better justice than I could, talk about why, what the, um, how this was the inspiration for, for Send Out Cards. What happened to him? Sure. It's a great story. It's a true story. Um, Cody, beautiful family, all excited, finished school, taking a job out in New York, marketing think Wall Street, um, New Jersey, one of those areas. He was saying goodbye to his whole family, didn't have a chance to say goodbye to his big brother that he, that he loved, Chris. And when he said goodbye to his mother, his mother said, oh, Chris is you know doing some volunteer work at the high school or whatever. He said, no problem, we'll be back in a couple of months. Um, when I get a chance to come back, mom, bye. And Cody went off with his wife and they went to New York City. And uh, the timeline might be wrong, but Cody then got a a phone call from his mom and said, Cody, you got to come home. Chris had a, an accident, and uh, he passed away. <laughs> yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah. Cody then came home, and when he came home, he saw all these people helping his sister-in-law because the house was not finished. They were building a new house. Mm. And he recognized that he didn't act on a prompting when he had a chance to go find his brother, give him a hug and a kiss, and get on the plane and go to New York. And he came up to this young kid, 24 years of age, and he asked him, he says, what are you all doing here? And the kid said, well, your brother was very, very important to all of us, and he would have done this for us. So hire hell water, we're going to get this house ready for the services. And they had a plumber, a landscaper, an electrician, and they made the house 
and the landscaping beautiful for the services that were coming forward. And the kid said, I had a prompting that I was going to do this before the services. And Cody said, wow, that's the second time I've heard the word prompting. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then he created the book and created the company by acting on his promptings. Excellent. Pretty cool. Yeah, great story. Uh, So one more time, if people want to get in touch with you or if they want to sign up for Send Out Cards. Sure. We're going to go on to myrandomactsofcardness.com. And uh, if that is uh, challenging and if I can't speak in the Boston accent, you can always text me (laughs) at 617-699-7442, and I'll get that information out to you. Great. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Thanks for joining us again, Jay. We'll be back with more after this.